Well, you know, I've been systematic with this so far, so Luna, you're coming with me. Alice! Luna! The green door! I'm coming. They both took off for the door, and I followed them behi followed behind at a run. No one else knows, I just know I'm taking these two. No one else knows what to do. I glance back over my shoulder in time to see the others head into the retrospective doors. Fi, Dio, and Kay ducked into the red door, just as Temyoji carried Quark through the blue door. Quo- Quova? Quova on it, right on his heels. Two, one, zero. Chromatic doors closing. Be real interesting to see where I end up here. Also, while we're moving on, hey there guys, my name is Nix and welcome back to Virtue's Last Reward. Last time, uh, we found a dead Akane and um, we didn't have time to get caught to the infirmary. Whoa. This is a dead end. All three doors seem to be locked. That's unfortunate. What's this thing here? It looks like the device next to the number nine door. I need a drink before I carry on because I can't do Sigmund's voice properly. Why don't you try pulling the lever? Might as well. That's better. Okay, so it's the one next to the treatment center, which I still don't know what it is. Huh? Look at the door on the right. It opened. Huh. That doesn't make sense. Oh, just the one on the right open. How did the how do you open the other two? You're probably just overthinking it. Yeah, probably. That door opened. That means we're going through it. Bring it on. But don't go soft on me now. I'll leave you behind. Come on, Sigma, let's go. Okay. <laughs> if I have to. Golem Bay? Golem? Golem? Go <laughs> Golem? I don't fucking know. This is where we pilot the Gundams. What is this place? It is kind of confusing, isn't it? What is it for? Well, I think it looks like some sort of workroom. If you say so. We should split up and search it. We need to find, um, key cards with moon symbols on them, right? Yes. They should be somewhere in this room. Well, we need to find the safe, then. Alright, let's do it! I'm just gonna... Before we start, there's a quick Google search as to what Golem is. Unless it's a spoiler. Okay, yep, um, never mind. There's, um, definitely a robot. What the heck is this guy? Maybe it's an Egyptian mummy. What? Any way you look at it, it's a robot. Uh, maybe it's a robot? There's no maybe about it. I can't imagine it's anything else. You're kidding, right? That's insane. Well, what do you think it is? Just a... well-made... Mannequin? Hmm. Look at this. What's this? A chevron block. Okay. Also, there's an oil spill here. What is this? It feels kind of greasy. Maybe it's oil? Hmm. Can I p a robot-y thing? I don't think it's a crash test dummy or something like that. Can I pull on this thing on its head? Oh shit, I've just realized. This thing is me, isn't it? <laughs> Robot-y thing. What does the radio do? Oh. It's got an antenna. You think it could be a radio? Why don't you try turning it on? Yeah, well, I tried that. Nothing happened. Maybe the batteries are dead. Hmm. What is it? I don't think it runs on batteries. There's an electrical socket on the side here. So you're saying it needs a power cable? Huh. huh. Well, I guess I better go find that then. I'm- Oh, I've just seen this on the back. I'm guessing the chevrons. What is this thing? It's shaped like a star. Maybe I need to put something in it. Something that's shaped like a star, I'm assuming. 
Yeah, so I'm assuming these chevrons go in here. Okay. Um, what's this? This kind of looks like a stage. Yeah, like for disco. Really? Disco? What's disco? Uh, who knows? Not me. <laughs> oh, Alice. I didn't know you were into disco. You've gone down in my estimations. Oh, boy. What do we got? Battery A! A, a blue battery. A toolbox. It's got a key in it. Huh? That's odd. What is it? This key. It obviously goes in this keyhole, but it won't turn. Can you get it out? Hmm. Let me see. I can. Do we have any WD-40? I'll take non-trademarked versions as well. Wow, there's a lot of stuff here. Whoa. Anybody else feel dizzy all of a sudden? No, that was just your imagination. Yeah. Right, whatever. So what the heck is this? I have no idea, which makes it pretty useless to us. Hmm. Maybe I could. What are you going to do with that? How about this? I'm really glad I've stumbled on this. Nope. You serious? Maybe I could try hitting something with it. What would you hit? Maybe there's something in here. I don't think so. How? Maybe if we roll it around a bit. How long does this go on for? I don't think that's going to do anything. Let's climb on top of it. What is that going to accomplish? Yeah, yeah. Pushing down on it didn't really seem to do anything. Maybe we're just using it wrong. And what should we be doing? <laughs> now I'm petting it. Petting it isn't having any effect. Of course. I just need to throw it. All you're doing is go all you're going to do is break it. Mm. Mm. Prey isn't going to help. Wow, this looks delicious. How the hell does any of this look delicious? Snacked. <laughs> oh, God, no, Sigma, what the hell are you doing? What's wrong with him? This is good. Oh, man, it's so good. Snap out of it. Whoa. Oh, and then, and then it loops. Okay. Well, that was, um... That was an experience. <laughs> oh. Uh, just as this fucking eye's watching me. It's kind of a mess here. There's stuff all over the thing. What's that? It looks like a piece of something. So we've got another chevron. Maybe I could try hitting something with it. Why would you? No, I want to look at this thing. Well, apparently that goes on for forever. So um, I'm gonna look at this occultic shit. A poster, huh? It's a little unsettling. Maybe it's a clue. Yeah. Let's take it. Whack it in the archive. Okay. It really looks like that thing there is meant to be actually examined. Whereas everything else is just a waste. There's a white jacket in here. It looks like it's got something on the lapel. A name tag? Harold. O one o one one o one. Harold. Name tables belong to a Mr. Harold. There's also something written on the back. Something's written on the back. Oh. I just wanted to make sure I seen that properly. There's a white jacket hanging in the locker. White jacket, huh? Oh look, there's something in this pocket. Hey, I knew there'd be something. 
a file. Is that a binder? There's a single piece of paper in here. It looks like a list. Find the frequency list. Doctor's code, huh? Would you like me to put it on? Huh? Why? Well, I just thought you might be into that kind of thing. Uh, what? I don't know what you're talking about. See? Bullseye. Look at you all bashful. You can be cute when you're embarrassed. Anything in this one's pockets? Nope. Can I combine these? I can. Sweet. Now I have my star. Um, we got a computer with a port. A desk with some drills. There's a PC monitor and a keyboard on top of it. Where's the computer? I'd imagine it's built into the monitor. Hmm. It's kind of hard to see in this light, but there's a single cable coming from the back of it. Is it a power cable? I think so. Then maybe we can connect it to something with an electrical socket. Have you seen anything like that, Sigma? I have indeed. I think I could plug this into the radio. Perfect. Right. I guess it's nice that we plugged the radio in, but what do we do with it now? Why don't you try turning it? Ju oh, tuning it, not turning it. You need to adjust it so it's picking up a specific frequency. Maybe we'll hear something. Exactly. If we get really lucky, maybe you can pick up transmissions from outside. Right, I'll see what I can do. We got a frequency list, didn't we? I need to tune this to 400, I think, because that's what I got in the name tag. Uh... Okay, so I need to get to 400 in four button presses. There we go. I was, I was gonna say, I heard that dial-up internet tone. What? What was that noise? God sake, me, you don't know what fucking dial-up internet is. How old are you? Look, monitor. It reacted to the noise from the radio and turned on. So it's some kind of voice recognition system then? It looks that way, yeah. There's something on the screen. This is... I think it's a blueprint of the room. Radio, don't think we need it anymore. That's a pretty old keyboard. Looks like it's been used quite a bit. Nothing happens if we try typing on it. Okay, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> Big red button! Doesn't this button seem suspicious? Yeah, most of the buttons are boring, but this... Or incomprehensible, but this one just speaks to me. What does it say? Come on, a big red button on a plate with a black and yellow stripes. It couldn't scream, don't press me any louder if it said, don't press me on it. Is it a self-destruct button? Maybe the moment we press it, we'll hear some a soft hiss and then the room will start to fill up with poisonous gas. What if it launches a missile? Oh no. Doesn't that seem a little... Yeah! Hey! What are you doing? It's okay. There's no way anything really dangerous would be right out here. I'm pretty sure Zero Senior wants us to play through this whole game. It wouldn't make much sense just to kill us in one of these rooms. Maybe, but... that That's just your opinion. You, you could be wrong. Well... I guess so. Then why the hell did you- Hey, hey, hey. Calm down. Nothing happened, so there's really nothing to get mad about, alright? Hmm. You heard that noise though, right? Like, something trying to start up? 
I swear to God, if T9000 over there is woken up, I'm not going to be impressed. Huh? That's odd. I want it fit. The star-shaped block? Yeah. It's the same shape and everything. Well, maybe it's not the right size. I guess so. Looks like this block's a little too big to fit. Hmm. What are you? Do you remember that blueprint thing we found? Yeah, I do. There was a red X on it, wasn't there? I haven't checked it. Hold on. Uh, memos. Nope, that's the wrong one. Archives. Rough sketch of the room posted with an eye on it. It's... It, it's none of these. Oh, yeah. Here we are. Exactly. You don't think the spot with the X is indicating a right around here? Huh? What, you've forgotten already? Come on, at least try to remember. It was like up here though, wasn't it? It, it was, I, I got the chevron. I tried pressing the button again and indicating something in this area. I feel like it was, but the only thing I got out of this was the chevron. So I feel like I've already done that. What do you do? Huh? There's a button up here. Then maybe you should press it. Right. Here goes! Oh god, it is the T-9000! Everyone run for your lives! Look! It's eyes! They're... glowing red. That mean it's... on? Robot thing. Can I press the butte on now and see what happens? Look, I'm just mash this red button until this thing gets up and tries to kill me. Nope, not getting anything except that weird noise. I feel like it's this battery that's missing. There are a bunch of switches and buttons on here. I have no idea what all the stuff on the screen means either. What do these buttons do? Probably shouldn't press any of them just to be safe. Did I check the drawers? I didn't. Hey, look, a tablet. Doesn't look like it's going to open. It's probably locked. I don't see a keyhole anywhere, though. Well, I see one for this drawer. No good. Won't open. Is it locked? Yeah. Well, there's a keyhole here, so we could probably get it open if we find a key that fits. Does this one fit? Damn, doesn't look like this is the right key. What's this tablet say? Huh? No response for the tablet. Is it broken? Part of the back seems to be held on by screws. I bet that's where the batteries go. Not combine these. Can I like? Well, I need a screwdriver, don't I? Is there a screwdriver anywhere? Well, pressing this button doesn't do anything, so now the robot's just awake. Damn it! Cause it's no good. The key's too rusty to turn, huh? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh shit! I think I, I think I, I think I understand. Can I like dip the key in this? Maybe I put the rusty key in this. Oh, there we go. Oil covered key. Now I can open the toolbox. Yeah, that way it'll just slip into the key box and snap. You know, what rust hap what does. I guess it worked. The lock's open. Yeah. Let's have a look inside then, shall we? There's a bunch of stuff in here. Might as well have a look then. Bottle of detergent for washing. Bottle of detergent? I think I saw a commercial for this the other day. It's supposed to eradicate grease and oil stains. Oh, I see. A screwdriver! You get in my tablet. Tablet. Which needs two batteries. Uh. Here. Now it's got a battery in it. So you put a battery in there, huh? Yeah. Still doesn't do anything. 
Maybe you don't have enough. Enough of what? Do I have to spell it out? Batteries. Look, in the, look at the indentation there. I'm pretty sure it can hold more than one. And a silver key. I believe this goes in this drawer. Yes! It worked! Now open it! Hold on, no need to rush me. Okay, so this one goes in here. Yes! It fits perfectly! Did... Did you just hear a noise? Yeah, from the middle troll. The middle one, huh? Handle! Okay. Well, while I'm on my list of uh, stuff to do, let's clean up this oil stain, shall we? Oh! Are you going to use the detergent to clean up the oil? That sounds like a good idea, but... I don't think detergent by itself is going to be enough. We need something to wipe up with. And how about putting the detergent on a rag or something? Seems like that would be easier. Okay, do I... I don't. Cool. In the meantime... Yes! Perfect! Do you think you can turn it? Yeah, give me a sec. Something's coming down on the ceiling. Uh, those are... I'm sorry, but why is one of them wearing underwear? Oh my god. They look just like the thing on the table. Robots. I mean, I don't know why we're confused. Oh, hi, battery. Battery B. Excuse me, I'm gonna need this. Don't wake up. That would be just the worst. I'm borrowing your underwear, good sir. This one's wearing boxes. Yeah, it looks like it. Why would a robot be wearing underwear? Maybe he's, uh, hiding something. Hiding what, though? Like a diary or something? Why the hell would you hide a diary in your crotch? Okay, well, maybe he's got a hose or something. Whoa, damn. Way to cut to the chase there. <laughs> Whatever. We'll know as soon as we get them off. Remove these shots of... Obfuscation? <laughs> yeah, obfus... Obfus... I've never heard the phrase obfus... The word obfuscation before. Remove these shots of obfuscation and let us gaze upon it, this so-called hose. Aren't you getting a little too excited about this? Alright, here goes. Ah. Luna, I haven't done anything yet. He's still decent. <laughs> Besides, when you cover your face and open your fingers so you can see out. Oh. How old are you? <laughs> Uh, you two are driving me mad. I'll just take them off. Huh? Yeah! Thanks, Alice. Can I use these to, uh... Boxes soaked in detergent. I goddamn can. Is that it? Looks like the other robots. That's a letdown. What the hell were you hoping for? What, what Alice wants is probably something we should, um... Just ignore. Okay, here goes. You're gonna wipe it up the oil with the boxes, right? Yeah. Okay, go for it. Hundred... Hundred and twenty volts. Good, looks like it's clean now. I wonder what this is. This... There's some... Something written here that the oil was covering up. A-O-Z-I? It says 120 volts, you twat. Sorry, Alice. That's the wrong button. Don't know why I somehow managed to press the PlayStation button. A-O-Z... No, you're reading it from the wrong angle. 100... 120 volts. Time to electrocute this motherfucker and have him join the stage. Um, what was the to put voltage in? Tablet. 
Oh, hey, the power's on. It's showing something. An authentication screen, maybe. It probably has some sort of security lock. No good. I can't figure it out. We need some sort of clue. ID 11010. Oh, hello. This thing's on. This came down with the robots, right? Yeah. It's got a pipe running toward them. I have a feeling that means there's a con- Oh, I have a feeling that means there's a connection there. Okay, let me just give this a try. As you can uh, clearly tell, I didn't read that. Damn it. This is hard. You can do it. Supply the correct voltage by connecting the wires. You can begin anywhere on the left and finish anywhere on the right. Hey, there we finally goddamn go. Man, that took me way longer than it should. Good job, Sigma. Oh, you're amazing. I thought of you all over again. Hey, what? I ship it! Power distribution complete. Preboot sequence complete. Please press the power button located on the console. Whoa, what was that? I'm not sure. But I do what it says, though. I don't like the sound of that. Also, hmm, I am starting to think that Luna was Sigma's old girlfriend. Announcement just now is about this button. You guys ready? I'm gonna push it. Yeah, I'm ready. Same here, go for it. All right, and there. Did it work? Look! Their eyes! Eyes? Oh boy, that's a, that's a thing. Oh, this is the code! This is for, um... Okay, so... Uh, nope. Where is it? This is for this. So it's gonna be like, um... One. So it's a. Uh, I just need to get my um, a whiteboard again. It is honestly the best way for me to work half of these puzzles out. That and I actually kind of like writing things down. I don't know, it's somewhat therapeutic. Uh, where's my whiteboard pen? Where are any pens? Why do I not have any stationery? Okay, so now I have six pairs of li uh, lies of eyes. So if I go in here. Post with eye on it. So if I oh and beacon I'm for the bottom one. Oh Beacon of Hope God damn it they're summoning Nagato again aren't they? <laughs> so the poster says Beacon of Hope. Can I like no. Yep, and that's the password. You did it, Sigma. You got through the login. Beacon of hope. How optimistic. Sure, sure. Look at the screen. That's my legit password. Hmm. Is this the password for the safe? Okay. Yeah, okay, I can I can enter another password here. It looks like we need to put in twelve characters. Is there twelve of anything else in here? If there is, maybe there's a connection? It's the 12 of anything else. 
Not that I'm aware of, Luna. What if I take all the lit, lit up ones and see what they that makes as a code? Well, like all the blank ones. Reminiscence. Let me try that. <laughs> I suspected as much. Good work! I'm impressed! What surprise, I wonder. The screen's changed. Huh? This looks like this looks different. The symbols have changed, but they're in and they're in a different place. Yeah, so literally the puzzle to this one was you gotta realize that the eyes represent a letter on each one, and then if you do all of the lit up eyes, you get one answer, and if you get all the um the non-lit up eyes, you get the next one. This is the safe, right? It looks like the ones in the AB rooms in the lounge. Yeah. It looks like this one's embedded into the table, but the door looks the same. It probably works like the others too, then. We just need a password to open it, right? Okay, so we got Star, Sun, Moon. That gets me my golden file. I feel proud I didn't have to look this one up. You did it! Good work! Hmm, well done. What's with the attitude? Never mind that. Let's just see what's inside. I haven't looked at any of these, which, you know what I mean, you said there were spoilers, so yeah, I, I, I'm glad I haven't looked at them, I guess is what my point. Moon, star, moon. Nope. Moon, star, moon. Oh, it opened again. I wonder what's inside this time. There's a lot of stuff in here. That's good, isn't it? Better than not having better than having nothing at least. Well, let's go through them one by one. First we've got a map. It says floor B. The map we found in the lounge said floor A on it. Well, we took the elevator down to get here, so floor A must be the upper floor. Yeah. Keep going. There's still a lot of stuff in there. These must be... Key cards. They have a picture of the moon on them. This must be what the announcer was talking about then. And we've got two of them, just like with the sun cards. You should take one, Luna. Huh? Why? You're a solo. Alice and I can keep the other one. Uh, oh, of course. Thank you. All right, what's next? Looks like a note. Oh, bu 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 fucking extra rules. So all three of us can't abstain. There has to be at least one vote. Why would there be a rule like that, though? Seems pointless. I think Zero Senior wants to make sure people are actually playing the game, regardless of the situation. What sort of situation are you talking about? Well... Could be anything, really. Whatever. We've only got two things left. What's this thing? It looks like some sort of plug or key. It goes in the back of Kay's head, I think. If I'm right in assuming. I guess you inserted it something in Twist. You see anything in here that could fit into? Even if we did, it doesn't really matter at this point. What? Look at the safe. What's the last thing in there? A key. Is that the key to the exit? Pretty sure it is. We can get out now. Awesome. Let's... Wait. What should we do about the plug? Um... Fine. I guess I'll hold on to it. I doubt we need it, but you never know. 
Sounds good. Let's go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that goes to the back of Kay's head. Which is the, um, one of the cutscenes we saw in, during the last break. Break in air quotes. The lock for the door. Right now it says lock. Guys ready? I'm gonna open the door. Go ahead. I'm all set. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. You found it! I know, and I didn't even have to look this one up. Now, Dab Governor. Huh? Was that you, Luna? No. Then, Alice? You honestly think a voice that coarse could come from a throat as fine as this? Yes. Then... Oh, yeah, that was, uh, that was me, mate. Oh, fuck. Why have we got a Cockney robot? Over here. Sigma, look! What is that? Oh, blimey, that hurts. Ah, ain't right for a fellow's back to feel like this. I mean, fucking hell, I don't even have a fucking spine, but you know what? Still fucking hurts me. It's a robot. And it's talking. With an accent. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing that's putting me off the most. The robot's got a cockney accent. Help it, Flower. Didn't choose to talk like this. Not by half. Now, Alice, darling, do I rightly recollect you characterizing my speech as cool? Oh my god, this robot's my new favorite character. Well, that's right, cruel it is. You really think I asked for this? See, they figured they give us all a, um, a what you call them, a personality. <laughs> Some tosser thought they'd give me this one. It ain't right, I tell you. Is it bad that, like, I'm hearing this voice and part of me is going, I'm Android 13, look at my trucker hat. <laughs> so, what the hell are you? Cooper. If you're a battle maker, I'm an astronaut. <laughs> right you are, my old son, right you are. Well, go on, have a butchers, mate. What do I look like to you? Robot, you say? Well, nearly there, but they call us golems round here. <laughs> call us golems. Golem? Oh, I've heard of golems. They're sort of monsters, I guess, from Jewish folklore. They're made from clay, and they look like men. They're supposed to do whatever their master, or creator, or whatever commands them to do. Well, aren't you a clever bird? You are, of course, correct. The golem of myth is a clay creation that moves under its own power. Our spellings are my different, though. The original blokes are spelt G-O-L-E-M, but me and me mates are G-A-U-L-E-M. Golem. That's an acronym for General Purpose Autonomous Labor Electronic Machine. And the truth to tell, it's a bit rubbish when you write it out all like that, but I figured they wanted to make sure they had the golem thing in there, you know? What with us being robots and all. Um, so, can I just call you Gollum? Uh, that don't seem quite kosher. After all, all of me mates here are Gollums too. <laughs> I couldn't very well call all of you lot human, could I? What should we call you then? Well, we've all got a product ID, and they're unique. I figure that's as good a name as any. And your ID is? GTM-CM-G-OLM Whoa! That's way too long, we can't remember that. What? You taking the mickey out of me? Never had a problem myself. Right then, let's just use the last bit, shall we? D-O-L-M? Golem? Golem. Come on, man, that's just Golem. Well, I'll be buggered. <laughs> can't say I've noticed that before. Sure it's a strange coincidence, isn't it? All right, Gollum. <laughs> you said Alice, darling, a little bit ago, right? I've fucking slipped into the accent myself. <laughs> oh, God, no, the fucking Cockney's just come out. All right, Gollum. You said Alice, darling, a little bit ago, right? I'm, it's really hard. To, now that... Because he sort of has the same voice I've given Sigma, which, you know, given one of the timelines where Sigma was bleeding white and we thought he was a robot, which... In hindsight, I didn't intend, but it actually kind of fits. What? 
A gentleman can't say something nice to a pretty young bird, eh? No, I don't care if you call her darling. What I'm saying is you called her Alice. How did you know her name? <laughs> oh, she ain't the only one of you lot whose name I know. I know who you are, Sigma, and you too, Luna. <laughs> I'm right familiar with all nine of you. How? You don't know? Oh, they got cameras all over this place. And then again, the lenses aren't much bigger than a screw. And they're all in the way. So I suppose I can't really blame you for missing them, huh? Now, as I was saying, there were these cameras, you see, and all of the data they record gets sent off to the mainframe in real time. So, I just gave the main core a ring, got those videos, and now I know everything you've done. Then... Does that mean you're Zero Junior? Cool, blimey. Are you bleeding serious? Oh, you gotta be off your box if you think I'm Young Master Zero. The Young Master is a right proper AI what supervises all the electronic bits and bobs in this place. My humble self and knows what the misfortune to be like me. I'm more akin to computer terminals who are merely borrowing a little bit of the central core. So, golems are kind of like Zero Junior's servants. Um, no, not quite, Governor, not quite. I'd say me and me mates here are more like uh, arms and legs, right? Now, you lot don't have brains in your arms and legs, do you? Of course not. Right you are, missus. It'd be all sort of nasty if your elbows and that lumpy bit on your ankle was all packed with brains. Well... We're like your arms or legs. The golem seat of consciousness, so to speak, ain't in the head. In fact, the matter is, it's not anywhere in the body, which makes a fellow wonder, where is it? In the mainframe? Spot on. So that part of me what thinks is in the mainframe. Everything this here body sees and hears and what have you, that all gets sent back there. Then the mainframe does some sort of computery jiggery pokery and comes up with some decisions and, and those decisions beget commands. Now those commands are sent over the wireless like boop 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 and eventually my body picks them up. Finally, those commands cause actions what move the various bits in my body. I, I've had a change of heart. The uh, Golem is currently my favorite member of this game. That's why these things like a computer terminal, you see. When I start when I started today's recording, I did not expect to encounter a cockney robot. The body's just an output device of sorts. If we were talking about one of them personal computers here, you could say a golem's kinda like a uh, a monitor, right? Eh? Huh? Oh, wait a minute. Then wouldn't that make you part of Zero Junior? Well, I suppose you could say that. What we're sharing a mainframe and all. But I don't know shit all about this game he's running. That part of mainframe's locked away from the rest of us. I'm an independent core. Uh, Zero and I are two different blokes. You recollect what Gollum stands for, huh? I'm autonomous. Hmm. If that's the case, your hands and feet analogy don't really make sense. My arms and legs aren't autonomous. They don't just move on their own. Uh, you sure, Governor? I watched you cross your arms just now. Huh? And now you, you're frowning and your forehead's getting all wrinkly. Do you do these things on purpose? Well, when you crossed your arms, were you thinking, Right then, let's cross them, shall we? Curl on down then, mouth up. And eyebrows, I'd be much obliged if you'd squeeze in a bit. There's a good pair of blokes. That's what you was thinking, isn't it? No? Huh, didn't reckon so. I figured you did all of that subconsciously. Ain't no man on earth who says to himself, feeling a mite nervous, I'll just twitch me leg around a bit, you know? <laughs> Who's thinking real hard about something and says to themselves, well, I think I'll just give the old loaf a scratch, that'll help. How's about when you reach for your tea, when you turn a page in your book? Or what about when your eyes just go straight for the pair on that bird you fancy? <laughs> yeah, the list goes on, me chums. But all of those things are your subconscious at work. Well, true, when part of your body does something, it's because your brain said so. But that don't mean your conscious mind is involved. <laughs> Fact is, it can't be. If your brain had to deal with all the piddly bits of living, it'd make you bore me. That's how us golems and the young master get along. You, um, you got it all sorted now, chums? 
Then you're saying that Zero Junior is the central part of the mainframe, and the golems are like his hands and feet? Righto. Blimey. Uh, guess I shouldn't be talking about such heavy rubbish, eh? My shoulders are all stiff. You're a robot. How can your shoulders get stiff? And you said your back hurt earlier. Are you just messing with us? Yes, I did. And no, I ain't. Me back is a right mess, it is. Last maintenance check, they just left me here. I've been on this bed here for years. <sighs> the lubricant for me joints is all gummed up. Every time I move, it hurts. But why did you wake up again after all this time? Why do you think, love? Because you lot turned me on, is why. Especially that other missus over there. Ha 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 ha! Robot erection jokes. Oh yeah, the button on top of the safe. Right you are, Gabna. Can you come with us then? The others need to see this. Huh. No, I can't. More's a pity. I can only go as far as this cable here will let me. I got internal batteries, but they're knackered. As a matter of fact, that's why I was here for maintenance in the first place. The yeah, same goes for these other blokes too. Of course, they ain't connected to a power cable like I am. So they aren't going anywhere anytime soon. I love this music that's playing in the background. Can I just point that out? I see. So, you aren't going to answer my question? Huh? What question is that? I asked how your shoulders can get stiff if you're a robot. Right, right, so you did. Not sure why you've got to bug up your arse about that particular issue, though. Well, I mean, I guess it's not really important, but... I'm just curious, I suppose. Curious, are you? Oh, that's a good word, that is. A good, powerful word. The kind of word that will set any robot's heart to flutter. Let's get you sorted then, shall we? Just lend me your laws of peers for a tick. So, how can a robot get stiff shoulders? And what does pain mean to a robot? Tell me, Guff, you ever heard of the Chinese room? Without waiting for an answer, Gollum launched into his explanation. Somewhere, a pretty young girl is trapped in a tiny room. The door of the room has a slot that uh, that a number of Chinese people outside the room use to sl slide uh, slips of paper to the girl. On the pieces of paper, questions written, naturally, in Chinese. Unfortunately, the young lady has no idea what the questions say. But then, how could she? She's never learned Chinese. Apart from a Hong Kong action movie or two in college, she's never even heard of it. So, for this unfortunate young lady, each note looks like nothing more than a bunch of strange symbols. Before she was locked away, she was given an order. Specifically, she was told to write an appropriate response to each question she received and slip that answer back through the slot. Once the Chinese questions began to show it up, however, she found herself at a loss. Oh dear, she says to herself, why can't I read these at all? What am I have to, what am I to do? It's at that moment that she spots a bookshelf. The bookshelf is filled with thick books. Upon examining them, she discovers that there are some sort of Chinese phrase books. They have no explanation on what anything means, but show Chinese responses to Chinese questions. Am I supposed to use these? The questions keep coming. More and more and more of them. She finds the set of characters that correspond to the set of characters on the paper and carefully writes out the indicated response. How's it going? It's awful. Please get me out of here. Are you hungry? Yes, I am. I haven't eaten anything since breakfast. Here they give some... Here they give us some twice-cooked pork. Ooh, sounds real nice, actually. Are you full? Yes, although I don't think my stomach likes it very much. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes, I'm dating a reggae dancer. When was your first kiss? When I was 14, he was a grade ahead of me in school. What color of underwear are you wearing? Black. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get out of this room? Beat the stuffing out of whoever's sending me these questions with the pan, with the pan you cooked that twice cooked pork in. All these questions were written in Chinese. And the answers were also written in Chinese. All the young lady did was accurately copy the symbols from the phrase books on the slips of paper with no idea what any of it meant. Incidentally, she doesn't have a dancer that, she doesn't have a dancer boyfriend. In fact, she's never even kissed a boy, although she's wearing 
Also, she's wearing white underwear. Anyway. Um. Yes? Is there any particular reason this girl is, um, pretty? Or, or why we need to know what color underwear she's wearing? Can't say there is. This tickles me fancy, I guess. <laughs> but the prettier the bird is, the more fun the story is, isn't it? Oh, he thinks like a right, he thinks like a right old cockney, he does. Exactly! What? What? Right. Well, what I wanted to say was this. All them Chinese blokes outside the room didn't know nothing about their books what she had. So it follows that they would have thought whoever was inside spoke Chinese just like them. You see? After all, far as they can tell, they're having a nice little chin way with one of their countrymen. Um, okay, interesting. But what does that have to do with you and your shoulders? Or a robot feeling pain? You thick? I feel pain when my body's having a spot of bother. Well, wow, hold up, mate, this ain't right. We keep this up and we're buggered. If things go really pear-shaped, we'll be brown bread. Oh, he's assume. I guess he's assuming what pain feels like from the database and because... Humans feel pain when something's not right in their body, so when he's when something's not right with his body, he's assuming it's pain. So says the central computer to itself, seeing that things are a bit bollocksed. In the interest of extricating my body from his unpleasant predicament, the mainframe sends out a signal over the wireless. I'm sorry, can we just appreciate the fact that someone actually wrote bollocksed out? <laughs> that this game is... I didn't think this game could go any higher up in my expectations. Boy, was I wrong by, by the use of the word bollocks. And my software interprets that signal as pain. And I stopped doing whatever daft thing I was doing. It's the same, in it? Just like the Chinese room. So you're saying the robots feel pain differently than humans, right? Use your loaf, missy. You listen to a word I've said. A human feels pain when you do something you shouldn't, like sit your bum down on a tap, right? Same thing for us robots. If you feel like being clever about it, there ain't really that much different between a human and a robot. Forget all about that mainframe and signal box, and us golems ain't that different from the bird in the room. So think about it now. How do you know humans ain't the same just without all the electronic pony, huh? What if when someone asks you a question, all you're doing is pulling out the right answer from some sort of phrase book in your brain? <laughs> ain't no way to prove that, of course, but as far as I can see, there ain't no reason to. I mean, it's all the same, isn't it? If you're actually a thinking creature, or if you're just some kind of language processing machine, all what matters is if the person next to you does what a human ought. Looks like a person, acts like a person, and talks like a person, then it's probably a person. You want to live a normal life? That's all you need to know. That was surprisingly deep. Hey, can I ask you something? Lay it on me, Gunner. Why'd you stop us? Ha! <laughs> right you are, mate. Right you are. Got so carried away on you, forgot. I haven't seen anyone for yonks, and I got a mighty excited as all. Just spit it out. Right, right. Well, uh, there was something I wanted to tell you lot. What was it? Patience, darling. Now, I know I might look a bit out of sorts at the moment, but I ain't really supposed to. Same thing for the rest of the blokes here. Fact is, the reason we look a bit like skeletons is because we are a bit like skeletons. It is this special artificial biological tissue what's called ABT. When a golem's all new and shiny, they've got a nice suit of ABT over that metal skeleton. Makes us look right human, it does. Even feels like real skin, with pores, a little bit of hair, and a few pimples, scars and the like. <laughs> Truth to tell, I doubt you'd be able to tell the real from the fake, even if it was right in front of you. See, right in the middle of... Command violation. Rogue processes detected. Product ID G T M C M G O L M. Executing emergency deactivation. Oh Christ! Unit G T M C M G O L M. Now 
Inactive. No, you've killed off Cockney Robot, my favorite character in this game. No other rogue processes detected in additional Gollum platforms. Returning to surveillance mode. Did... Did Zero just shut him down? It looks like it. Damn it! I wonder what he was trying to tell us. There's a robot amongst us! Actually, I know the- I know! I'm the robot! See, right in the middle of- Oh my god! I just connected who you are with that stupid Cockney accent, Luna! You sound like Luke from Professor Layton! Right in the middle of what? And now I'm doing the Cockney accent subconsciously. God damn it! An ambidex gate has been opened. Fuck you, Dio! <laughs> 45 minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. What the hell? Someone on the other team must have opened it. Shit. Why would they do that? We have to hurry. Right. Let's go. We pushed through the magenta door and ran into the warehouse. There stood Phi, Dio, and Kay. Hey! What the hell, guys? Why did you open the AB gate before everyone got back? I apologize. We only turned away for a moment. Dio opened it. <laughs> you got a problem with that? Of course we do. Why? I don't remember us all promising we wouldn't open the thing until everyone showed up. This isn't about promises. Are you stupid or just an asshole? Probably both. We were able to get back here in time. But what about the others? Oh shit, that's a good point. What about Quark? Ten Miyoji, Quark, and Clover are still out there somewhere. What were you planning to do if they didn't get back in time? Nothing. Why would I have to do anything? Didn't you hear the voice? Anybody who doesn't get back in time to vote just gets their vote automatically set to ally. It's pretty straightforward to me. So what if they don't get back in time? They'll all get set to ally and all three of them will get 2 BP. Yeah, they didn't find the supplementary- Why do we always find the supplementary rules? Sounds like a sweet deal to me. Ten Miyoji's only got one BP. I figure he'll be pretty happy to get two more. And that'll put Quark and Clover up close to nine. So that's not too bad for them either. In other words, they ought to be thanking me. Um... Did you guys find a note? What? What's this? We found it in our safe. Read it. Here are some more AB game rules for you. <laughs> I'm glad you're reading them because I skipped over them because this is like the seventh time I've read them. Not voting is not an option. If both parties refuse to vote, then every bunny gets penalized. In other words, one person out of every color group of three has to vote. What the hell, man? This wasn't in our room. Back me up here, guys. He's right. There was no such note in our safe. Oh, well, damn. That's a bummer. I'd never have opened the gate if I'd known about this. Really? Of course. I'm worried about the others. Aren't we all? Time runs out, they'll... They'll be penalized. Yes. I know. Quark is part of that team. Maybe something happened with him. He seemed a little off before we headed into the chromatic doors. This is bad. Hey, wait a minute. Where's Alice? She was here just a moment ago. Ah, oh, Christ. 
It took me only a moment to spot her. She was several yards away, kneeling down to look at something on the floor. What was she looking at? I couldn't tell. I was about to head over to see what was going on when... Alice? Whoa. Hey, guys. Quark. Has Quark been here? Did something happen to him? He disappeared. Disappeared? What do you mean? I mean, he's gone. We can't find him anywhere. When was the last time you saw him? We were heading back here. Tenmyoji and I went into the lounge, but Quark didn't follow us. We turned around and started calling for him, but... When he didn't respond, we ran back the way we'd come. And you couldn't find him? Right. We thought maybe he just hadn't seen us go into the lounge. So we checked the crew quarters and the infirmary. But he wasn't there either. All right, we need to split up. If we can't find him in any of the floor A rooms, we'll move to floor B. Okay. I need to go tell Alice. You guys go on ahead. Alice, what are you doing? Right, you do that. I'm really weird. I'm... I, what is Alice doing? Also, apparently this is going to be a long episode today. Hey! Quark! Quark! Man, I'm super concerned about what I might find in some of these rooms after the Alice incident. Sorry, after the both Alice incidents. They can't be dead. They're not allowed to show dead children on video games. He's not here. I checked both rooms. He's not in the other two either. There's no one here. Temiochi and Kay are in the lounge, and Dio and Luna should be checking the infirmary. Right. Okay. Let's leave that to them and head to floor B. I, I, I'm assuming all the uh, doors with X's are blocked off. Oh, they aren't even doors at all. One of the two is the correct idea. You went through the red door with Dio and Kay, right? Yeah, so? What was on the other side of that door? You want to see it? Yeah. Maybe Quart went there. Fine. Follow me. Because, you know, he didn't go to the... He definitely didn't go to the Gollum research facility. The pantry. I keep seeing this room, but I've never actually been there. The mythical pantry. This is... The pantry. Pantry? That drawer over there is stuffed with processed food. Wasn't half bad, actually. You ate it? Yeah. It was some paella, nasi goreng, schnitzel, yukejang, borscht, and tom kha gai. Oh, and I ate the chef's pasta, too. <laughs> Why? That's a lot of food. Can't help it. I'm a growing girl. How old are you? 20, I think. Sh fuck, Fi's younger than me. <laughs> Oh god, that's a horrible thought! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Just... Just stop! I don't even know where to start here. One. By the time you hit 20, you're done growing. Two. You think? You should know how... You should be old enough to know how old you are. Three. How on earth are you 20? You look like you're 13 if you're a day. I can't believe you're only two years younger than me. Oh, wow, Sigma's actually the same age as me. <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny. You must have done a lot of drugs to look like that at 22. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> damn, shots fired. <laughs> oh, give me a break, you little punk. Don't call me little. I'm an adult, you dried up asshole. Ugh. Fine, whatever. So this place has enough food to keep people alive for a few years, huh? 
<laughs> Looks like this stuff is going to expire anytime soon. Yeah, the use by date is about a hundred years from now. We're assuming. How about water? There's a tank over there. It looks like they're pulling it out of some kind of well. Is it safe? Well, since Dio isn't rolling around on the floor in agonizing pain, I'm gonna go ahead and assume it's okay. You made him drink it to make sure it wasn't safe? I guess you could say that. So you ate all the food without a second thought, but the water struck you as possibly dangerous. No, I was careful with the food too. Dio had some of it first, and it seemed fine, so I... Oh, I almost forgot. What? I ate something else. Twice cooked pork. Oh, for God's sake! Why the hell are you shouting about that? Wait a minute. Twice cooked pork? What is it? Well, that just reminded me of something. Reminded you of what? This might seem hard to believe at. <sighs> Bullshit. Oh, come on. At least let me tell you first. Alright. So we found this robot and he had a cockney accent. I explained how we'd found a room called the Gollum Room, but... Gollum Bay on the other side of the green door, and now we met a robot named Gollum who told me a very interesting story. I see. So the Gollum guy was turned off just when he was about to tell you something. Yeah. So the last thing he said was, see you right in the middle of... Mm-hmm. Right in the middle. Middle could be from Middle Kingdom, which is another name for China. Well, this was utterly pointless. Really? I don't think so. Please, explain. Well, maybe he was trying to say that this game is like the Chinese room. In other words... Sigma! Fi! There you are! I've been looking all over for you! What's going on? Something bad. Something really bad. Well, come on, spill it. Alice, Alice is... Just come with me. She's in the crew quarters. Is she... Wait a goddamn second. We haven't even found Quark and Alice is dead. Question mark. Possibly. I'm assuming this is what this is about. Why do I do... A... I do a lot of yelling. I've started noticing when I played this game. Oh, boy. Alice incident number three. <laughs> what? No, this isn't real. All I could do was... All I could hear was Zero's words echoing in my ears. Your heart stops, your bracelet comes off. If you've never been... If you've never been in turbulence, it's hard to explain. You feel a sudden alien weightlessness of a long fall. And for just a moment, you, you're you painfully aware of the fact that you're thousands of feet above the Earth. And a flimsy metal machine made by failable men kept aloft by scientific principle that nobody actually understands. Wow. That is, um, that's a grim outlook on flying, Sigma. You'll never see a friend... If you've never seen a friend dead, it's hard to explain, but it's like that. I knelt down beside Alice's body and pressed a shaking hand to her throat. No pulse. The skin had already turned pale. The thing in front of me looked like a human being, but it wasn't being a human anymore. Why this happened? I knelt there for several long moments, staring blankly ahead. My throat burned and my chest was tight, but I forced myself to take three progress progressively calmer breaths and stood. I clenched my fist, took one last breath and turned. Who found her first? Me. I was looking for Quark on floor B and couldn't find him. So I came back here and, well, you know the rest. Hey, what's that look supposed to mean? You better not be thinking I did it. Well, suspicion often falls on the first to discover a crime. Fuck that. She'd already been murdered when I got here. How do you know she was murdered? <laughs> what? Come on, it's obvious. She's got a knife sticking out of her chest. Does that look like an accident or a suicide to you? 
How do you know the weapon was a knife? What? All you can see from here is the handle. For all you know, it could have been an ice pick or some kind of tool. Well, well yeah, I, I guess that's true. Who wants to be the volunteer to pull that thing out? But I mean, come on. Who wouldn't look at that and assume it's a knife? And it's not fair to suspect someone just because they happen to be the first one to find the body. If you want to be like that, then the last person to see Alice is the person you should be looking at. Who was the last person to see her? That'd be Clover, probably. I need to go tell Alice. You guys go on ahead. Alice, why? This wasn't supposed to happen. You promised me we'd catch them together. Don't do this. <laughs> Clover. I can't trust them anymore. It could have been any one of them. They killed you, Alice. I can't forgive them for that. I'm going to get revenge. I'll find out who killed you. And I'll... I'll... <laughs> hey, Clover! Shut up! Don't you talk to me! I'm sorry, Alice. Her voice shook as she spoke, but before anyone could say anything, she turned and ran out of the room. Wait! Clover, come back! Temyoji took off in pursuit, and I made to follow when... It's pointless. Even if you caught up to her, she'd never tell you anything. Huh? Think it through. There are two possibilities. Either Clover killed her, or she didn't. If the former is true, then I doubt she would confess. If the latter is true, then I imagine she'll be just as reticent. After all, Alice and Clover seem to know each other. In fact, they seem quite close. It seems safe to assume that Clover is currently very suspicious of all of us. I doubt she would open up to anyone right now. You seem pretty calm. Did you do it? Not again. <laughs> well, if you really want to suspect me, please go ahead. I'm beginning to feel rather accustomed to it. I would ask you to consider my motive for killing Alice. Specifically, the fact that I have none. Well, yes, but none of us do. None of us have ever met Alice before, right? So why would we want to kill her? You are correct. But only if the murder had a motive beyond, well, murder. What do you mean? Do you remember when we found the old woman? It seemed clear that her killer was Zero Senior, and that they were one of us. There is every reason to think the same person murdered Alice. Perhaps this person plans to kill us one by one. Perhaps the entire nonary game is just window dressing. Perhaps the only reason we are here is so that Zero Senior can kill us at his leisure. In a world of his own creation. Why would anyone do such a horrible thing? Presumably, because they enjoy killing. Zero Senior seems to be rather... disturbed. Hold on a minute. That doesn't mean they're one of us. They could be the tenth person hiding out somewhere. No. Well, why not? There's no way Zero Junior wouldn't notice that. And if he did notice, I really don't think he'd just let something like that slide. But isn't Zero Junior just an AI without a body? What could he do? Maybe. But Zero Senior has a body. Do you think they'd really just let a tenth unwanted participant just run around murdering people? Well, what if the tenth person is Zero Senior? Not possible. At least not so long as we assume Zero Junior's statement to be the truth. Do you remember? He made it quite clear that the real Zero was one of us. I thought about what Kay had said. If the killer was Zero Senior, then who could be the killer? Dio? Luna? Kay, perhaps? Or maybe Clover? It was always Ten Miyoji. Fi, maybe? No, it couldn't be her. I had been with Fi the whole time we were looking for Quark. There was no way she could have slipped away to stab Alice in the chest. Wait a minute. There was one person I'd forgotten. Quark. It seemed a little bit of a stretch to think a kid could kill someone of Alice's size, though. That meant there were five real suspects. Dio, Luna, Kay, Clover, and Tenmyoji. Hmm... Where had Quark gone? Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All players, please enter your votes. 
If no vote is recorded before the deadline has passed, any non-voting parties will automatically ally. Well, my partner's just gone, so... Apparently Zero doesn't feel like this is worth stopping the game for. A blunt but effective way to make the point. What do you mean? We should get to the warehouse. It seems clear he feels no compunction about killing us, should we disobey the rules. As such, I recommend we follow them. The others filed out of the room. Pretend to face Alice. Alice. I'll find out who did this to you. I promise. I felt my stomach settle back into its normal configuration. As the and the fire in my chest melted the icy hand from my spine. I stood up straight, gave Alice one last nod, and walked after the others, leaving my regrets lying on the cold floor. So it comes down to me versus Luna. Hey, look. Two of the AB gates are closed already. Probably ten Miyoji and Clover. Wasn't he a pair? Doesn't Quark need to go with him? As long as one person in each pair is there, it should be okay. Sharing their destiny, huh? Pretty much. That's good news for you, Sigma. After all, you're a pair, but your partner is- Dead, yes, thanks, Kay. Well, I'd rather not say it. Yeah, I know. Good luck for you, huh, Luna? What? I don't understand what you mean. Well, if Alice was still alive, you'd have a hard time choosing Betray. She only had one BP left. If you'd picked Betray, you could have killed her. Of course, that's not really a problem now. Stop that, Dio. I would have chosen Ally regardless. I mean, Sigma's going to be my opponent, and I... I trust him. Really? Haha, <laughs> uh, this is interesting. If one of you guys picks Betray, you're gonna get a show. Dio! Ignore him. How do you and Fi plan to vote? You even gotta ask? Ally, of course. Right, Fi? I don't know about that. It's a difficult question. What? At least Fi's open about her bullshit. Well, if we choose Ally and Kay chooses the opposite, then he'll have nine points. He can go through the number nine door whenever he wants. I, it might be just because Sigma's an idiot, but Fi's real good at this mind games thing. But it's not as simple as just choosing Betray, either. If Kay decides to ally for some reason, then you'd end up with nine points. So we should both choose ally. Seems easy to me. You're planning on betraying me, aren't you, Dio? As soon as you go through that door, it will be only the two of you in that room. Yeah, and Fi will kick his fucking ass! I've no doubt you could overpower Fi, if you had the desire. I highly disagree! Oh, give me a little credit. No one has more gentle points than me. You think someone of my stature would resort to violence? <laughs> the nerve. Yeah, I've seen the other timelines. Um, what? This is just a thought, but why don't all of you promise to choose Betray? Then you wouldn't have to worry about anything. If you knew the other person was going to betray you, you'd have no choice but to do the same. That seems pretty negative for you, Luna. I'm sorry. Nothing to apologize for. We appreciate your suggestion and we'll take it into consideration. But unfortunately, I don't think it's a very good idea. See, my goal is to beat this game. But Fi... Maybe that wasn't the best way to put it. When I say I want to beat it, I mean defeat it. Completely. I want to get us all out of here. We haven't beat the Nonary game until we're all out of this place. Yeah, I'm about that. I guess we won't all be getting out anymore, though. Yeah. Oh, you mean Alice. We never found Quark! Yeah. At any rate, all of us choosing Betray every time is hardly ideal. Uh, even though, like, that was what we set out to do! We'd never escape. Then what are you going to do? Hmm. Kay needs to choose Ally. It's the only way. How will you make sure I do that? I have no guarantee that you'll choose Ally as well. Would you do it if I could give you that guarantee? Well, yes, I suppose so. You promise? Yes. Good. Let's do this. Dio, 
Huh? There's someone behind you. What? The moment Dio turned his head, Fi was off. With, seem with seemingly superhuman strength, she leapt through the air, across the room, and through the AB gate. What the fuck? You bitch! God damn it, Fi! Open this fucking door! <laughs> He pounded on the door, screaming, but it showed no signs of opening again. Fuck. He gave the door one last slam for good measure, then ran off to the ne next open one. Invalid pair detected. Please retry with valid partner. Members of a pair cannot vote in separate rooms. What? Why the fuck not? This is against the rules. How am I supposed to vote? <sighs> this is bullshit. I see. This is how Fi can guarantee her choice. Dio can't vote now, so the chance that Fi will choose Ally just went way up. After all, if you pick Ally and she betrays you, then... Dio will have nine points. Exactly. But don't you think Fi might be worried that Kay will break his promise? After all, if he can be pretty sure that Fi is going to choose Ally, then... You needn't worry. Her plan is very clever. I will definitely choose Ally. Two minutes remain until polling closes. We don't have much time left. Let's go. Right. Okay. Um, Sigma? Hmm? You, you are going to choose Ally, right? Of course. We both have 5 BP right now. Even if I did betray you, I'd only get 3 points, and that's not enough to escape. So I'd have to wait until the next round anyway. Make sense? Oh, I see. Huh? Oh, nothing. Never mind. Anyway, you promised. You have to choose Ally. Right, I will. I know it's Luna, but I suddenly have a sickening feeling in my stomach. Thirty seconds remain until polling closes. Now, what am I going to do? Well, I guess there isn't really any question. After all, I promised Luna that I'd pick Ally. But, what if she was lying to me? I would have chosen Ally. Regardless, I mean, Sigma's going to be my opponent, and I... I trust him. Ten seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> 